So good morning and welcome everybody. My name's Rebecca Caro. I run Creative Agency Secrets. We run educational events around marketing themes quite regularly because we know that there are lots of smart business owners who have good questions and are seeking insight into broad areas. But then, of course, the second part of the learning is the practical application to your unique situation. Today, we're going to have some dramatic exits. <laughs> I'm going to follow and show how practical execution marketers, like my firm, put into practice the things that are set up by SEO experts that then deliver leads, inquiries, and sales, not always in digital channels, but for uh, market um, brands like yourselves. We'll have questions. Questions as we go along is my preference, because if something's really fresh in your mind, but please understand that we're on a little bit of a tight time frame, because some of you have got offices to go to later, and we will give brief answers, and then there'll be an opportunity to chat afterwards. Creative Agency Secrets likes to show off some of our expertise by allowing people to do it for themselves. We recognize that there are very smart people out there who have smart people who work with them, and some of the techniques that we offer can be done by you. And so this is a book that we've written with a man called Andrew Healy that covers off five different things that you can do for your own website yourself. One of them explains how to affect the way Google represents your website. So the different elements, like these six links to different pages, if they are not the pages that you want displayed, we explain how to change them. So it's a free download, sorry, bottom of the uh, feedback form, so you'll need to write it down. But it's pretty obvious. The link is called creativeagencysecrets.com forward slash get my website working. Right, back to the very beginning. So, taking the expert work that Richard and his colleagues have done, how do I put that into practice in the tactical execution marketing end of the world. And that's where businesses like mine come in. SEO works in a binary way. Firstly, you can say what you want to get found for. I want to get found for selling green ballet shoes. Secondly, if you are not getting found for that, you need to find out what searches people are using that is bringing them to your website as it is at the moment. It's quite simple, gap analysis, and then we need to close that gap. And so I'm going to show you here a couple of techniques that you can use to close the gap and get your website ranking for the things that you want. These are screen grabs from inside Google Analytics. If you don't know how to use it, and if you haven't got it on your website, please do that immediately. On the left, this is a search query. I'd like you to read the 10 key phrases there and make a suggestion to me. What do you think this website is about? Electronic signatures, about time, business sites, cattle sorting sticks, CD grip, clarity and writing. Suggestions? Online forms? Anyone else? Okay, bit of a puzzle. What about the one on the right? Rowing. Yeah. It's pretty blooming obvious. As it happens, they don't actually sell Adidas rowing shoes, but they are getting found for the right sort of search terms already. The one on the left is a time management expert. And you can see there's a total disconnect between their expectation and the reality. And this is the sort of thing that you can set up. There, we explain how to set up the SEO query in your analytics in that ebook. There's another way of finding out whether what you write is going to give you the answers that you want. On the internet, there are only two sorts of readers who will read your website. 
One is human and the other is a machine. Now, machines read differently from humans. I am not advocating writing your website copy just for the machines. We know that doesn't work. But I am advocating educating yourself in finding out how machines perceive what you write. We've all read excellent journalism. We've all read novels. We've all read biographies and educational books. They are written exclusively for human readers. And you can use some very elaborate, sophisticated communication techniques in how we string words together, how we use punctuation, how we use humor, sarcasm, all of them fabulous human attributes. Regrettably, machines are not good at any of that. It's a bit like talking to a really, really severely um, disabled person who just is very, very literal. There are some tools out there, some free tools that you can use to find out. And this is one of them. It's called Open Calais Viewer. You take a section of text off your website and paste it in. And this is off our website. It says, I, I need more customers. If you haven't got regular marketing and sales plans, you're missing out on winning new customers. Proactive marketing activities and revenues. We'll write a marketing execution plan with you and deliver it monthly. So it's a sales pitch for my firm. And on the left, it shows you what the machines think this is about. And the answer is business finance, sports, and technology internet. And then below, the social tags of business finance, entrepreneurship, marketing, business, technology, internet, sales, and again, sports. Not quite sure about the sports bit. But it gives me a good clue that I am in the right general area for what I think I was writing about. Here's another tool called Alchemy API. And this one also does sentiment analysis. So a different bit of text, but the colored squares and the size of the squares indicate what it thinks the sentiment is behind your language. So the green stuff is positive sentiment. The red stuff is negative sentiment. The gray stuff is neutral. Again, the URL's there, and we'll share the slides so you can go and experiment with these for yourself. It's a very good way to prove to your boss that what's there at the moment is not what you think you need. Now, ways to influence the SEO on your website. Increasingly, Google does favor writing for humans. The algorithm is coming further away from machines and more to, it's getting more sophisticated. So write using your keywords in all the obvious places. If you haven't got a blog or a news page, I would commend you to look at creating something like that because it's the sort of page where you can add more information to your site on a regular basis, which also benefits the frequency with which your site gets searched. Use outbound marketing. We all probably do it already, but use it specifically to drive traffic to the pages that you've written. In the last couple of weeks, I've added a page to our website and to several of our clients' websites specifically for yellow pages. In New Zealand, a lot of people still use yellow pages and yell.co.nz to find suppliers. So we now have a page, creative agency secrets forward slash yellow. And the reason I've created that is not just so that I can isolate traffic that has come from the link on the digital Yellow Pages site. It's also to treat different customers differently. And that's a really key principle to the sort of marketing that we recommend. On it, it welcomes you and it acknowledges that you have come from a Yellow Pages search. It also gives a quick signpost around our website to help guide those people as quickly as possible to the place where they might want to go. And then, of course, lastly, using inbound marketing to drive traffic to those pages. Many of you have come to the event today because you've been invited by my organization. There's a web page called Creative Agency Secrets forward slash events. It's got this event at the top of the page. Lower down the page, it has recordings of past events. It's a dynamic change that pay changes. We don't keep it the same all the time, but it's really useful. And it's a high ranking page because every time we have an event, we're sending people back to the same URL. So these are things that I'm sure you all know. 
but you, they all need to reinforce each other mutually. I'm a massive, massive fan of Google Alerts as a way of educating the people who are at the words end of your business, who write PR, copywriters, people who are creatives, to find the sorts of search phrases in your niche that are being used by other people. It doesn't always work just starting from a clinical analysis of a key, using a keyword tool. So using search to find out what is being talked about in your area of expertise. If you don't know how RSS subscriptions work, come and talk to me afterwards, <laughs> definitely use hashtags. <laughs> Have any of you ever searched inside a social media network like Facebook or Twitter? A couple of nods. Bear in mind, Google cannot search inside Facebook. It is blocked. If you want to find Facebook groups, other brands inside Facebook, you can only search inside Facebook to get an effective answer. So if you have competitors out there or you want to see how you show up, it's not just the classic search engines of Bing and Google that matter. Can anyone name the top five search engines in the world today? Let's call out the names. YouTube, really big search engine. Heaps of people know they want a video answer. What else? Yeah, possibly. Others? Bing. Yep, Bing is. I don't think it's in the top five. Baidu? Mm, that's the Chinese search engine. It is big, but only in China. Amazon, eBay, these are search engines. They're not just online retailers. So include them in your own researches for your business niche. I read a book the other day that said, if you want to find out what sort of questions people are asking about your area of expertise, go into Amazon and go and find what book titles have been published in that area. And I thought, what a great suggestion. They're not all self-help books, but there are some really, really good titles, often written by the public, not by professional publishers and authors, because they perceive there's a need to have an answer to a very specific question. So search inside social, know your analytics. Now, most of these things are available in free versions, but there are also paid versions. It's often better to have the paid version, goes without saying. Now, how can we get you smarter? How can we get you taking the smart SEO advice that you've got and looking at more areas for search? Does anyone look at, everyone's got a search button on their own website. Do you ever analyze what phrases people search for? Because you can, it's very easy. You just go inside your analytics and you can turn on site search, site search tracking. It's, um, it's just a, a simple thing under your admin. Um, you see in the top right where I've squared over admin, it's in view settings. It's really cool. Because you can find out just for your own business what it is that your customers and prospects are looking for. It's also worth obviously looking at your competitors. It's always interesting to see what they're doing. And it's important to know, as Richard illustrated, that people are searching for phrases that you want to rank for. You don't just want strategy and insight, whatever it was for the marketing association that no one searches for. You've also got to know what the dollar value is. How much are people prepared to pay to rank for this? Because you might not be prepared to pay for it, but you do need to understand the competitive situation in your part of the marketplace. This means that you write content for your website that is both profitable and competitive. So inside your site, what is it that people want to know? What proportion actually use it? And that might be something to do with the prominence of your search um, icon. But what pages do they start their search from? What do you think you can learn if I know that people start their search from the home page versus your e-commerce store page? Maybe they've got down into your store. They're going several layers deep in a particular product area, and they still cannot find what they are looking for. It gives you insight into how you've got your menu structured, 
maybe what you're calling your product compared with what they are searching for. It might be that they're looking for LCD televisions and you're offering television you know, with a, with a number or a brand name. What pages do they go to after searching? Because search doesn't usually produce one result, even inside your site. It'll produce multiple results. So how are those aligning? And how likely are they to leave after they've done a search? Does that tell you if they found what they're looking for, or if they have not found what they're looking for? And do they refine their searches? So they're pretty obvious questions, but unless you're looking for these things, you won't know the answers. Now, I don't know if many of you offer or choose to have advertising on your commercial websites, but quite a few businesses do. It's called the display network. Richard touched on it earlier. But it's important to find where the profit is and the value is in the particular keywords that you use. Free keyword research tools are available. Google is the most popular one, but this is a different one that is independent of Google, and there are obvious benefits in that. And so this is the rowing client, but we're looking for here the value demand, the real supply, and the um, profitability of different search phrases that are being suggested against search seed words, which are crew, rowing, rowing coach. So, you know, they're, they're all reasonably obvious concepts, not difficult to do. But you can imagine that this is going to influence the sort of phrases they're going to write for and the results that they get, because they can tell that this particular phrase is worth, you know, 10, 15, 20 dollars for an advertiser more than a different one. And that impacts the marketing that they choose to do. It also allows me to see where the competitive websites are. Who else is ranking for this search phrase? Now, they may not be actually direct competitors, but it is worthwhile knowing what the search engines think is important for that phrase and where you sit in the broad picture there. And again, that's another really good way of impacting the outcomes that you want by being proactive, using SEO to change what you're doing in your tactical marketing. <laughs> Richard is really, really knowledgeable and has been in this game for a very, very long time. I count myself to be pretty knowledgeable in execution marketing. I've also been in the game for a long time. There are people in this room who have also been doing this for a long time, and there are some of you who I know have not. I'm not asking you to categorize yourself, but I am asking people to be honest. SEO doesn't have to be complex, but you can choose to be very sophisticated with it if you have the basics set up well. Both of us have covered off a lot of the groundwork that you can do yourself or you might think your 15-year-old son can do. It's not going to help you in the long term unless you're prepared to climb the mountain and get sophisticated. Like a lot of marketing, persistence and diligence pays off. It's not a flash in the pan job and you don't get instantaneous results unless you pay for them and keep on paying for them. And some people can, but many of us can't. But the main thing that I would like you to take away from today is that people who are knowledgeable experts will shortcut your learning. A couple of hours spent with our firms will help you focus on a tactical execution plan that will get you results without you having to do all the learning that we have taken on, and I've probably rejected more, more knowledge than I actually use in my career. That's my contact details. My cards are out the front on the uh, table where the uh, breakfast is. Do go download the ebook for yourself. Um, feel free to share it amongst your colleagues. I'm not precious about it. We do sell it, uh, so I ask you to be respectful in how you treat that. Are there any questions on the sort of things that I've covered off? That's easy then, isn't it? Right. Any other questions for Richard that have arisen? 
Good, even better. We're going to leave you to fill out your feedback. Could the um, Creative Agency Secrets and Pure SEO team come forward and wave because they will collect your questionnaires. So round the back, there's four guys standing at the back, plus myself and Richard. So when you fill them in, give them to Jeremy, Janet, Cassie, and I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Good. Um, and then have another cup of coffee and some more breakfast, and we'll do the draw in about five minutes' time.